In this video, I will show you how to copy a file from your Docker container to your host machine. If you've wondered how this can be done, or if you knew about the docker cp command but never got around to using it, this video will show you exactly that. So I have this tool installed on my container, which is webkit html to pdf, and it takes html input and outputs pdf from that html. So let's point it to my website. And the second argument is the output file. Let's call it website.pdf and hit return. It will load my website into a headless WebKit browser and then it will use the print functionality to generate the PDF form. Let's take a look and see if we have the file. Sure enough, we have website.pdf, but I want to have it here in this directory. You may want to do this with log files, for example, because Docker containers are ephemeral. That means that when you destroy a container, you destroy all the contents inside it. So in my case, website.pdf is on the file system of the container. Let's first take a look at Docker CP and see the help items for that. We're going to look at the first version of the command and it's docker cp options container colon source path and then destination path. We're not going to use the options, we're just going to write docker cp and then we'll take the container ID which is also the host name in case you haven't provided one when you launched it. And then auto completion already says here, we're going to need a slash root slash website PDF path. And for the output, we're going to specify website dash container ID dot PDF. Why are we doing this? Because you can also use the container name if you've given your container a name when you launched it instead of the container ID. So if we look here, sure enough, we have our website dash container ID dot PDF, which is exactly the same size as the one in inside the container itself. Let's now use the container name to perform the same copy command. So we're going to write docker cp, then the container name, which in my case is converter, and then the same command with the exception of the file name, which is now website-containername.pdf. So if we look here, we have the same file, two versions. Let's just open one of them and see that everything is okay. Hopefully we'll see a PDF version of my website homepage. So let's say open website container ID PDF. And sure enough, here's the PDF version of my website homepage. And the nice thing about this is that it also keeps the links. So if I click on blog, for example, it sure enough opens my blog homepage. The same should happen to, I don't know, an article. So let's click on an article link. Let's take the latest article. And sure enough, it opens the article we clicked on. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you found it useful. If you did, please hit subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Medium because I'll be posting videos like this frequently from now on.